So kids and parents, I'm here with my good friend uh, of how many men? That's how many years, Miss Kim? Oh it's boy, been a while since uh, uh, it's mid, been twenty years anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, mid mid nineties, early nineties, yeah. ninety three maybe. Wow. Uh, Steve Shogren is an author, and uh, he's written like some amazing books. The first one that I was in, uh, uh, aware of was called Conspiracy of Kindness. Right. And it was uh, it's a it's a great book. It has changed uh, the culture of the church in a lot of different areas. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, uh, Steve is uh, my guest today, and we are going to talk about just how this whole thing got started. Some of his favorite stories. I've got a few of my stories, but welcome, Steve from California. Hey, Jim, good to be with you guys. Yeah. Thanks so much for helping us with this. This is an amazing, uh, amazing opportunity to talk to you and reacquaint with you. And uh, just some of my, some of my favorite memories of, of our time in Cincinnati at the Vineyard was, you know, um, just some of, the, some of the kindness things that we were going out and doing. Uh, my favorite story was when we got to, uh, we, we were, I think we were getting ready to, for a Matthews party, but so we would go into an area you know, and we would give groceries to people and just bags of groceries. And then we would ask if we could pray for people. Mm -hmm. And this, this lady just invited us in. She's like, oh yeah. And she, she, we started praying over her just, you know, three or four people around her. We gave her the groceries, start praying for her. She just starts weeping. And she mm -hmm. just says, I, I've known God loved me for a long time, but I haven't felt it practically like this uh, and it was just like oh man that is so good i love that uh, so steve how did this whole kindness thing get started well i was one my wife janie and i have been involved mostly in starting things from scratch and so we would go into a city meet people uh, go to mcdonald's have coffee with new people we meet and that grows into a group and so forth but we did that in cincinnati we Start with five people in the living room, and I had uh, three jobs at once. And uh, one was a job at driving a school bus. And yeah. so I, I've been around kids all my life. I was a fourth grade teacher for a couple of years at one point, and uh, on it goes. But I'm warming my bus up. It's freezing cold, and I'm complaining and praying, saying, God, what is wrong with what's going on? And I felt like I, I, I heard clear as a bell in my heart, uh, the reason that nobody is interested in what you're doing, because we, we'd been working at it for a long time, had about 15 people <laughs> after a year and a half. And yeah. uh, it's, uh, it's boring, Steve. <laughs> and I thought, that must, uh, can that be God speaking to me, boring? <laughs> and, uh, and so I just pray, I pray back and simply I said, uh, God, what is it boring? And, and I felt like you said, go do what Jesus did. And, uh, and you'll see, do what Jesus did, and you'll see what Jesus saw is what I felt like I got from the Lord. Wow. And uh, so we went out and began to practice, well, let's just not worry about if anybody comes to church. Let's not worry about it if anybody, if we, if we lose all of our money. You know, yeah. we only have a few people, so what's the big risk, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and, and amazingly, our people got energized. We, we did a, a car wash, I think, was one of the first things we did, Jim. And uh, we uh, put up big signs, free car wash, no kidding. And uh, marching back and forth, we had a number of people pull in and, uh, you know, some people start crying. I mean, yeah. you would wash my car and you don't want, you won't receive even uh, a donation. Why would you do that? We think that Jesus would be washing cars if you were walking around today. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He'd be doing a lot of things that uh, he, he did would. back then and maybe new versions of it too, like yeah. washing cars. So, yeah. That yeah. is awesome. So. What what has been your uh, what's one of your favorite stories about uh, you know doing this kindness thing and reaching out and doing people doing more than what people expect? Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, I, I I think one of the very first car washes uh, we were doing it in a parking lot somewhere. Um, signs up and so forth. Free car wash. A guy gets out of the car and he says, "So what's the catch here?" We said, "Well, we're just trying to show God's love in a practical way. No donations." And the guy says, wait a minute, are you guys Christians? <laughs> we said, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, are you, here's another question. Are you the kind of Christians that believe in God? <laughs> and I, you know, we thought, this is a trick question. And, uh, and uh, we said, yeah, we're that kind of Christian. We're kind of thinking to ourselves, yeah, we're that, yeah, we're that very peculiar, very small percentage. <laughs> anyway, the guy says, 
Last night, my son and I went to the circus. Uh, I get him, among other things, uh, popcorn and a uh, one of those helium balloons. And on the way home, he starts talking about God. And, and he says, uh, Dad, is there a God? I you know, There's got to be a God somewhere. And, um, and he goes, what about all the creation and so forth? And so he goes, I got an idea, Dad. This little eight-year-old kid, he writes a prayer on there. Dear God, if you're if you are real, send people to us who know you and Ooh. believe in you, believe in you. Wow. And uh, sign Billy and his dad. <laughs> and so here he is saying, are you the kind of believe in God? Because that's what the prayer said, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and so anyway, here we are the next morning washing his car. And uh, that balloon had taken off the night before. They tied it onto a string and let it up yeah. in the air. And uh, the next morning, here we are uh, washing their car to show God's love and oh, I, I love that story. It's so that simple. Is- it's so simple, but yet so effective in yeah in presenting the gospel. Now, at some point, you told you, I think you, I heard you say that you know kindness is great, but people have to be like hit like maybe five, six times before yeah. they, it really gets their attention, and that might be yeah. you know, true of most people. Do you still believe that? I think it takes more than ever uh, because we live in a culture that's. Uh, you might say orbiting further and further away from any kind of a biblical base, if you want to call it that, uh, mm-hmm. you know, a Jesus focused base. Yeah. And uh, it used to be five to seven, uh, what one, one theology professor called uh, significant encounters with the gospel. And uh, now I think it takes more like a dozen or more. Uh, and I've I compared that. those notes with other people and they, they tend to think the same thing, you know, wow. I keep on nudging, 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 nudging. And with the balloon story, the, the little uh, kid and his dad both uh, came to personal faith in Jesus and uh, got involved at uh, the vineyard in its early stages, and it's very exciting. That is yeah. so cool. So how, yeah. can, how can kids and families, you know, what, what are some of the things that they can do? Well, um, you know, right now, in particular, there's COVID going on, and I'm sure people will watch these videos later uh, yeah. And, uh, but, uh, there's crisis happening and, and what do you do when there's limitations? And, uh, you know, I like to say that, uh, good old Robert Shuler, some of you guys remember his name. He said, uh, find a hurt and heal it. See it. Oh, I'm sorry. See a need and meet it. Find a hurt and heal it. Wow. And, uh, in times like these, there's more hurts and more needs than ever. And, uh, so if we just like turn on our noticing glasses and say, God, where could I, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I, uh, lately I've been having people tell me things. One of them was a going door to door in their neighborhood doing dog washes. And uh, they have uh, hoses. They've got some uh, dog shampoo, whatever. Uh, yeah. Cats, if the cats will tolerate it, why not? <laughs> that might not happen. You might get a scratch. <laughs> yeah, put on your whatever. But uh and, uh, you know, the, the amazing thing is, is that you don't even have to go in their house. Of course, they bring the dog out. You can do it all very much uh, yeah. distance and so forth. Yeah. Um, and and so these old boys that I'm thinking of did it. They, they took the motto from the bottom of the Statue of Liberty, and they made a little certificate on their computer. <laughs> and it said, bring us your dogs who yearn to breathe free air, <laughs> et cetera. <laughs> your weak and weary dogs, you know, and uh, – it was so cool the because creative. the neighbors were going, let me get this straight. You're eight years old and you're showing Christ love in a practical way. And, you know, I get chills retelling the story yes. because, yes. Uh, you know, what pure way to do that than with a, an eight-year-old, you know. That's amazing. Yeah, I remember going, so at, at the church where we worked, um, we, there was this big closet. And I remember going in the closet and seeing, like, how many rakes, like, were in this closet to yeah. go and, and to rake leaves. That's one thing that, you know, all the leaves are kind of falling down right now here in Virginia. And mm-hmm. uh, that can be something that you guys go do. Just mm-hmm. say, hey, can we, uh, can we rake your leaves for you? And that is yep. a huge blessing for people. And uh, I know a lot of communities have the, you know, the, they'll vacuum them from the gutter mm-hmm. if you have put them in the gutter. So mm-hmm. that could be something that families do together. And uh, you don't have to you know, you can be socially distanced, and uh, that'd be a good thing. So, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So what's your, what's your project that you're up to now? Um, well, you know, again, with all the COVID thing going on, but uh, we live in 
Los Angeles, like you mentioned, uh, we're on the eastern edge in a, a college town, but it's not like a state college. It's more, uh, it's very expensive colleges that are very kind of high level, uh, yeah. if you will, high, high, whatever. And uh, uh, there's no sororities, no fraternities, for example, but there's a lot of people coming into town from other parts. So there's gum that people drop on the sidewalk. It's a nice area. So I've been going out and scraping the gum. I looked on Amazon and they have scrapers that have a handle on them yeah. about four feet long. Yeah. I have a, a vest that says uh, kindness in progress. And at the bottom of it is our website. And oh. I get more people stopping me saying, really nice of the city to do this. And I go, oh, no. I, I, <laughs> you know, again, why would you do that? And I just think that Jesus would be scraping gum, among other things. <laughs> and they, now, Jim, this is really kind of a cool, it tells you where people are. Uh, I've always believed in that kind of a Jesus who would be willing to scrape gum. Yes. And uh, again, getting chills, you know, because uh, I, I believe, you know, this is a, a little spin that's a little different. I haven't always thought this way, but I do now, is that deep down, people really do want to know and obey God. <laughs> And, uh, and it, there's layers between where they are and that deep down part. But yeah. uh, I'm convinced that, you know, by and large, people really want to know the Lord, you know. Well, they want to know him in a, in a way like, uh, so the story we're telling with the kids this week is when the, the, the widow, mm -hmm. uh, you know, went into church and she gives her till two pennies. And mm -hmm. then the big, you know, the big fancy people get in and they throw in their tons of money and, and Jesus asked his disciples, so which one do you think gave more? And then, yeah. I, I don't know if it's happened this way, but I, in my mind, I can see them starting to say, well, we, and then Jesus just stops them and says, no, it was the lady who gave everything that she had. And in, yeah. a, in a culture where we give as just as much as we need, as, as much as we need to, to go mm -hmm. that next step and to give people more than they expect, it's just like, when I got that $40 tip, <laughs> it was yeah. like, what? This is amazing. And, and so I just, I challenge the kids all the time to, to be thinking of what they can do, just like mm -hmm. Jesus showed us how to do yeah. it. And, and take that next step and go beyond what you think people are going to expect yeah. and do yeah. the thing that they, that's going to blow them out of the water and show them that God loves them in yeah. that practical way. It's such, yeah. a, it's such a powerful thing. And uh, surprise them. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, what you're saying, really. And, uh, surprise them. That's a good, that's a good. What kind of people would wash your toilet? It's one of my favorite projects. <laughs> what kind of people would come to your business and wash your toilet to show God's love? And, uh, you know, we have more stories, uh, Jim, um, about that. That's just astounding. It's, you know. It's, it's an amazing thing when. You know, you, you start to show God's love. You know, it's mm -hmm. one thing to talk about it. We talk, we've talked about it way too long. But it's yeah. another thing to actually prove it and mm -hmm. go out and show the world how much God loves them and how much he cares. That's right. It's a, yeah. it's a powerful thing because it's so unusual. So, yeah. You know, the practicality of showing people God's love is just amazing. We would rather understand it and then maybe do it. But... What I figured out, and I know this is pretty much where you are too, Jim, is that uh, they go together, but sometimes you have to, just to do it first, and then you figure out how you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make I've sense? Been doing, I've been doing it in kids' ministry that way for a long time. <laughs> like, just, let's just try it. Let's just try it and see what happens. And then afterwards, you're like, no, that didn't work. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But when you're talking about God's love and how do you prove that to people, it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's another level. It's a, just yeah. a different level of, of uh, kindness that people need to feel in their heart. You know, they hear the words all the time. I love you. But when, yeah. when it's practically, you know, drawn out to them and it's yeah. something that they feel in their heart, then it's really a blessing. Yeah. So one last thing, Steve. So, yeah. you know, we're talking about the, the poor widow and she gave everything. So, I'm going to have, can you pray for the kids and the families and ask, ask God to show them some things that they can do to prove to whoever that God is going to tell them about, just like you've been doing for years and years and years mm -hmm. about how God can uh, talk to them and give them something to do practically. Mm -hmm. 
Sure. I'd love to pray. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Lord God, I, I thank you for my friends that are around right now. I invite you, Lord God, Holy Spirit, Lord God, to come and rest upon us. Mm. Open our eyes, Lord. And uh, I pray a deposit of your spirit, uh, not just of, of endurance and, uh, and grit, but Lord God of creativity and maybe above everything else, just a, uh, an experience of fun. Lord, let us know what it is to uh, enjoy you as we go and give you away. Move through us, Lord. Let us be your pipeline, not your container, but your pipeline that gives away and refreshed. In Jesus' name we pray. We agree together. We look forward to what you're doing, Lord. Amen. 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 Steve, that yeah. was so good, man. Thanks so much yeah. for joining us. And uh, we will be sure to keep keep in touch, yeah. And uh, hear the hear the new stories. You know, the old they, stories are great, but man, we got to make some new stories. Well, the cool thing about this is every time you go out, you you talk to five people, you'll get one good story probably out of it. <laughs> <That's> it's low <laughs> hanging fruit. <laughs> That's right. Well, thanks yeah. so much, man. Appreciate you. Love you, Butch. You too, man. God bless.